Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. As you mentioned, St. Patrick's Day was, I think, really the first um, large public event uh, among St. Louis that had to be canceled. I know there's been some worry about unofficial street parties popping up in Dogtown. People are just so mm-hmm. used to going there. And mm-hmm. it seems pretty selfless that the businesses are saying, no, we don't want that. We're, we're going to try to stop that. I think, I mean, not to <laughs> toot our own horns, but I do think, um, I do think we have a unique and remarkable um, group of businesses. And we have a commitment to our community beyond, um, you know, revenue in any just one day. I'm Sarah Fenske. This is St. Louis on the Air. There's no St. Patrick's Day parade in Dogtown this year. The traditional Irish festival and parade has been canceled for the second year in a row. But that doesn't mean there's no Irish spirit in Dogtown these days. Just last week, guitarist John Baldwin and fiddler Robert Ryan stood at a local gazebo and shared the Munster jig. And while Dogtown leaders are hoping to avoid crowds of revelers, they'd still love for you to visit their neighborhood just south of Forest Park. And joining us today to explain what they have planned is Joe Jovanovich. He's the co-owner of the Pat Connolly Tavern and president of Dogtown United. Joe, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. So, Joe, uh, Dogtown St. Patrick's Day Parade was one of the first big events to cancel last year. Did you imagine at that point that you'd have to cancel the parade all over again this year? Mm. (laughs) No, absolutely not. Certainly never in our wildest imagination did we think that this um, lasting effects of the pandemic would um, stretch to a a full year later. Um, But despite our, you know, best hopes, uh, the situation didn't quite improve quickly enough for us to safely be able to um, plan uh, to host the quote-unquote normal uh, festival and parade this year. So um, here we are uh, pivoting as we have done this last year uh, once more. So it feels like a lot of people are getting stir crazy and there are now some people who are vaccinated. Was there any talk about let's just go for it? Um, I mean certainly we worked very closely um Dog 10 United partners with the Ancient Order of Ibernians to produce the uh, festival and parade in Dogtown and we um met up through the end of last year and were closely looking at the factors and basically with the permitting processes as they are with the city of St. Louis um it reaches a point to where you can't really continue mm-hmm. um so we had to make that decision in advance and while it's great that circumstances do seem to be improving in recent weeks. Um, unfortunately, it's too far um, gone to really uh, <laughs> to change back to hosting the normal event. And I and I still remain confident that it's um, it's still the best course of action to uh, remain cautious and mm-hmm. uh, avoid large public gatherings. And hopefully, we can get over the hump of this thing um, soon. You can come back next year in full force. In the meantime, let's talk about what you have planned for this year. There are three pieces of this. Fill us in on what those are. Well, yeah, we wanted to make sure we could still acknowledge the fact that this is a crucial and important holiday for for our community and obviously for the broader St. Louis region. Um, Dogtown is honored to to host these decades of St. Patrick's Day celebrations. So we couldn't let it go without um, some... Uh, tip of the hat. So we've uh, pivoted to some virtual aspects. Um, again, to stress, of course, there there is no um, festival or parade, any formal outdoor events uh, in Dogtown tomorrow. But um, we did uh, kick off the month of March um, with a art installation partnership with uh, Painted Black STL, a arts collaborative that has commissioned um, several murals that um, celebrate aspects of um, Irish heritage in the Dogtown community that we've installed around um, the Dogtown community. And that that got us started in the month. And we also um, kicked off um, several weeks ago a home decorating contest. We challenged our Dogtown neighbors to um, put their best um, 
face forward in terms of uh, dressing up their houses in <laughs> um, Irish flair and spirit. And I'm happy to say that um, we got a number of great contestants involved, and it's been a great um, community building opportunity. And we're hosting an online voting process that concludes today, and we'll be rolling out the uh, winners tomorrow on St. Patrick's Day. Well, so that's exciting. So it's not too late if people want to get in on this voting. Oh, boy. No, and, and it seems like, you know, thankfully, I suppose some people are taking this very seriously, which, you know, Dogtown never um, backs away from a challenge when it relates to St. Patrick's Day Pride. So the virtual pride is flowing strong. And yes, indeed, if you want to get involved, voting closes tonight at 6 p.m. And if you go on to Facebook and search for Dogtown United, um, you can find uh, posts that can take you to the um, photo albums. You can click like for the um, houses that you like most, and mm -hmm. the top vote getters will be um, tallied later this evening. So that's the Dogtown United Facebook page. We also want to mention if people aren't on Facebook or they are already on our website, we have some of those up at stlpublicradio.org, so you can check out what Joe is talking about here. Joe, is there any particular house that stands out to you as impressively Irish? Oh, um, Sarah, I'm not going to go on the record in terms of uh, influencing this vote one way or the other. My 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 duty is to remain impartial as the um, uh, uh, convener of this contest. I think they're all fantastic, um, but certainly the ones that you've um, posted pictures of on the um, website um, are, are, are definitely commendable. And I, I really do thank everyone who's gotten involved in um, helping us uh, celebrate the, the Dogtown spirit through the home decorating contest. You also mentioned these murals being created uh, or that have been created by painted black STL artists. Where can people find these in Dogtown? So um, they're scattered across a few different locations. Um, we're happy to host uh, one of them at um, our family pub, the Pat Connolly Tavern, uh, Tam in Oakland. Um, we have one in front of uh, St. James the Greater, um, kind of oriented around the, um, the convent and school building. We have one along um, Franz Park and uh, Wilkinson School. Hmm. And uh, we also have one in uh, along Clayton Avenue uh, by Dewey School. Uh, so we tried to spread them around to um, some of the entry points to what we think of the broader Dogtown neighborhood um, and to make sure that the, the, the corners of our, of our Dogtown um, collective uh, through Clayton Tam, High Point, and Franz Park neighborhoods all had um, some representation in terms of how our murals were um, installed around. And are these meant to be permanent? Oh, no, they're not. Um, we're going to keep them up um, throughout the rest of the month. And then our plan is to um, safely store them away. And then we will find ways to um, bring them back for next year's celebration and perhaps find other ways that we'll continue to grow um, an interactive community arts as a part of our future years of celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. So we talked about the murals. We talked about the home decorating contest. Again, you can find that at Dogtown United. Um, the third component of this, this is a, a coupon book? Ah, uh, yes. So the Discover Dogtown um, Passport Booklet is a partnership that Dogtown United and the Dogtown Business Merchants Association um, collaborated on over these last few months and really trying to think about obviously one key piece to um, having to change to this virtual format is that it is a blow um, to the Dogtown business community yet again to have a second year in the row um, without the busiest day of the year for, for many businesses and even for those businesses that aren't bars and restaurants that may or may not um, necessarily have a huge day on March 17th. Um, just that lack of attention on the broader Dogtown community um, is certainly something that we wanted to try to find ways we could <clears throat> um, alleviate. So the Discover Dogtown uh, booklet is essentially a business directory that includes um, a comprehensive list of all the businesses across the Dogtown community that we'd really encourage folks across St. Louis to consider supporting in the weeks and months ahead and helping us bounce back after a second year of missing St. Patrick's Day. But also, um, it does include some great offers from, from a good number of those businesses in terms of um, special discounts that only folks who purchase the passport 
can get. And those businesses uh, include not only bars and restaurants, but several other retails and uh, services. So um, we definitely encourage folks to check it out. And if you go to dogtownunited.org, our website, you can find a link to um, purchase these um, passports online. So you mentioned uh, the St. Patrick's Day festivities, sometimes the whole week around St. Patrick's Day. Um, That can be really good business for Dogtown. And I know that's been the case for your bar as well. People love the Pat Connolly Tavern and they like it the best at this time of year. Is it hard to to have to forego those crowds? It's hard. I mean, certainly um, from a strictly business standpoint, um, it would be great to um, rally Um, and um, I've reflected a lot this past few weeks, um, certainly as we approached a full year of um, um, having to alter our plans due to the pandemic. And one of the things I'm most proud of um, as a Dogtown business owner is that last year, as you mentioned, St. Patrick's Day was, I think, really the first um, large public event uh, among St. Louis that had to be canceled. Uh, the, the the shutdown order, I believe, took place maybe on the 18th. Mm-hmm. Um, so technically, St. Patrick's Day in Dogtown, at least the, the festival had already been canceled, but bars and restaurants could have opened up and tried to get in one last hurrah um, last year uh, before the shutdown occurred. And uh, I'm proud to say that um, we came together as a, as a business community and really decided that we would remain closed last year, even though we weren't really forced to. And I think that mm. speaks to the commitment that our business community has for the safety of our of our neighbors and our staff. And um, as we approach this year, very similarly, I mean, it's great that things are looking good enough now to where um, many of the bars and restaurants can be open tomorrow, but um, everyone is approaching it um, very judiciously for those that will be open and... Mm. Um, are taking safety very seriously and have um, protocols in place to really um, limit the crowd size. And it'll be far, far different and far more um, low key than a, a normal. Uh, St. Patrick's Day in, in any of the bars in Dogtown tomorrow. Yeah, I, I know there's been some worry about unofficial street parties popping up in Dogtown. People are just so mm-hmm. used to going there. And mm-hmm. it seems pretty selfless that the businesses are saying, no, we don't want that. We're, we're going to try to stop that. I think, I mean, not to <laughs> toot our own horns, but I do think um, I do think we have a unique and remarkable um, group of businesses and 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 folks here in the Dogtown community that do that do see the bigger picture and and do understand we have a commitment to our community beyond um, you know revenue in any just one day, and I, I'm certainly proud to to be a part of that. Um, but yes, indeed. Um, The businesses also, of course, recognize we also have practical liability concerns. And the last thing we want to do is spark anything that could lead to an impromptu um, gathering that gets out of hand along the street. So we certainly do encourage Mm -hmm. folks to um, still adhere to the CDC guidelines and all the city directives in terms of uh, avoiding large gatherings, um, staying distant, and, and again, to stress that there are no formal outdoor approved events um, in the neighborhood tomorrow and that um, uh, we certainly don't encourage folks to to gather along the streets in any way that would um, you know cause a large crowd that could somehow be uh, dangerous. Joe, in our last minute here, there's another part of this I, I want to make sure to ask you about, and that is everybody looks forward to the Irish music at the festival that goes alongside the parade. Um, I understand that that there's an attempt to maybe do a little virtual musical component. Can you tell us about that? Well, um, yes, we will be uh, featuring a video tomorrow. We've been working on a small little featurette to weave together a couple interviews of some leaders in the Dogtown community, and we'll be... Um, featuring a recording of some uh, music within that video. We won't be having any type of live um, virtual music performance tomorrow, at least on behalf of Dogtown United, but we we did want to have a little bit of a commemoration. So this video tomorrow will um, feature some of that same music we heard at the top of the segment uh, from two um, great local players who play a lot in Dogtown and uh, definitely... Couldn't couldn't let the day go by without a, a little bit of music, and I'm I'm sure many of the bars and houses across the neighborhood will be blasting Irish musics of all type <laughs> tomorrow as well. <laughs> well, I'm glad we still have that. COVID cannot take that away. So Joe Jovanovic, uh, co-owner of the Pat Connolly Tavern and president of Dogtown United, thank you so much for joining us today. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. You can get more information about all of this at dogtownunited.org. And speaking of music, I want to go out of the show with a little more music. This is I Have a House of My Own with a Chimney Built on Top of It. This is performed by St. Louis artist Emer Arkins and Eileen Gannon. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.